They improved the lighting too. Good evening to everyone joining us on Zoom. Welcome. We're going to just take a minute and uh, start broadcasting to Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us this evening. Just give us one minute. I want to remind you if you do have any questions for the council member or for Director Jill Bourne, please put them in the Q&A and we will get to that in a few minutes. So um, just give us a minute. We're going to start broadcasting to Facebook Live. Thank you everyone for joining us on Zoom. We are broadcasting live on Facebook. Just give us one minute. We're gonna start broadcasting. And we are live on Facebook. Welcome, Council Member Johnny Camus. Welcome, Jill Bourne. Welcome to everyone joining us on Zoom and to everyone joining us on Facebook. Yeah, and welcome to District 10 Community Connections. As you know, um, we have my staff standing by to help you with questions. So if you have questions, please write them in the comments section if you're on Facebook. And if you're on Zoom, put them in the Q&A section. And we'll try to get to as many as we can in the hour that we have. You know, we, lost this, we launched this Community connection segment here in April, and we're always inviting great guests here from, from our city and from some important dialogue that are important to our community. So if you have ideas on who we can invite, what topics you're interested in, please send them to us, and we'll be happy to try to get guests to fill up our next Community connection segment. Uh, and before we uh, talk to our distinguished guests, we have several announcements and updates that I usually put you know, people give you an update on what's happening in our city. Uh, let's start with our June edition of our newsletter, which is always uh, well read. That's coming out next Monday, and it's filled with resources for upcoming, uh, you know, virtual events and, and great resources, as it usually does have. Uh, to give you some more updates of what's happening locally, the Parks and Recreation Department uh, is opened up five cooling centers uh, to provide residents with cooling places to beat the heat. Now these cooling centers will be open throughout tomorrow, uh, Thursday, May 28th, between 1 uh, p.m. and 7 p.m. Residents who visit the cooling centers must follow all the county COVID guidelines. So please uh, wear your mask and, and um, we're gonna practice uh, social uh, distancing uh, at, uh, at the centers, the cooling centers there. Uh, on the COVID-19 testing situation, the Department of Public Health recommends that uh, frontline workers, including grocery store clerks, food delivery workers, retail associates, and first responders should get tested monthly. And uh, there are 46 sites throughout the county offering COVID-19 testing. Testing is available seven days a week and uh, appointments are required for these drive-through testing uh, facilities that can be, and uh, the appointments can be made online at sccfreetest.org or by calling 888-334-1000. The county is also launching a mobile testing unit to provide outdoor pop-up sites and this walk-up testing site is available without an appointment. Ne uh, neither an insurance or a doctor's note is required so this is a, a you know just walk-ins. Uh, the next pop-up testing site will be this Friday, May 29th at 10 a.m. Uh, to 2 p.m. at the La Placita Tropicana Shopping Center lot on Story Road. Uh, more updates. Catholic Charities now accepting calls uh, for the uh, Disaster Relief Assistance for Immigrants program, and their phone number is 
1011. And if you missed any of these phone numbers, we're going to put them all online and uh, on our resource page at sjd10.com. Uh, the Great Plates Delivered program connects older adults across California to meal delivery services. Seniors and other adults at high risk from COVID-19 can access this program at mysourcewise, that's W-I-S-E dot com, or by calling 408-350-3230 and press option number one. So give your old laptop or tablet a new life. District 10 is organizing a device donation day for June. If you have laptops uh, or, or tablets that you no longer use, we'd love to get them into the hands of students who need them. Uh, we found uh, um, partners to help refurbish some of these computers and they'd, they'd be a great asset to, to help all the kids who can't afford uh, computers for their learning. And more details are gonna be in our new newsletter on where you could donate these devices. Uh, the DMV um, has further expanded uh, expiring, sorry, has, has extended expiring driver's licenses. And that might be interesting to all of you who can't even make an appointment right now. Uh, so drivers of age 70 and older with a non-commercial license that expires in June or July will receive a 120 day temporary extension. So you really have to do, do much for that. Drivers that are age 69 and younger with a non-commercial license that expire between March and July will receive a temporary extension through July 31st. And so for more details, you should visit the dmv.ca.gov. And this week at City Hall, we have an update to the rent moratorium, uh, provide an extension. And so renters will have uh, up to a year to catch up on the obligations of, of their rents. The housing department is hosting an eviction moratorium webinar on Zoom to explain recent changes. So that, uh, that uh, seminar is, is, uh, is tomorrow, Thursday, May 28th at 2 p.m. And we'll post the information shortly here um, on this page. Uh, the second phase of the park amenities reopening is underway. So San Jose, you've, you've seen those tapes uh, masking all the benches around there. So San Jose park benches and most of the 65 sports fields are now open. With, uh, with benches in 206 parks, it'll take time to open them all. But uh, we want you to be able to use these benches. But please keep in mind, you know, uh, if you're if uh, the the guidance for on COVID and and uh, healthcare, so for more information about park amenities, you could visit us uh, uh, visit bit bitly forward slash prns. Don't worry, you don't have to remember that. Just log on to our resource website. On transportation, we have BART service. We're so excited about BART coming into Melpitas and Berryessa and North San Jose starts Saturday, June thirteenth for customers and that's that was years in the making and we're finally happy to have it um, and, and on, on June 13th. Caltrain is also accepting applications to fill three seats on their Citizens Advisory Committee. Anyone living in San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Clara counties uh, who wants to apply uh, can at caltrain.com uh, forward slash CAC and the applications are all due by Thursday, June 18th. Again, if you've missed any of these announcements, we'll, we'll have all some information on our website as well. And now, without further uh, ado, I, it's one of, one of my favorite uh, 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 people in our city, one of uh, city, you know, the city managerial level folks. Uh, Jill Bourne has joined us here today um, I've, I've been delighted to work with her for many years now, and I love her commitment to serving our community and our children. Thank you, Jill, for joining us. And I'm going to have Amel read off your extremely impressive bio. Hi, Jill. Welcome. Uh, Jill Bourne is a city librarian for San Jose, California, and director of the San Jose Public Libraries, with a focus on expanding access, partnerships, innovation, and educational outcomes. She is committed to enhancing the relevance and leveraging the value of public libraries in the communities they serve. Jill has been recognized as a 2009 mover and shaker by Library Journal, one of the Silicon Valley Business Journal's 2015 Women of Influence, 
Library Journal's 2017 Librarian of the Year, a member of the 2018 Upstart 50 by the San Francisco Business Times, and most recently was honored with the 2019 CineQuest Visionary Award. Welcome, Joe, and thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> well, I'm gonna pass it on to the council member and um, I just want to remind everyone that is joining us on Zoom or Facebook, if you do have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. If you're on Zoom, if you're on Facebook, please write them in the comments. And we also have some questions that have come in ahead of time. But I want to pass it over to the council member. And again, welcome so much, Jill. Sorry if I interrupted you there. Welcome. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Welcome. Thank you for uh, being part of Community Connections here. And uh, so, so, you know, let's, let's dive into some meat here. And start by saying, you know, how has COVID-19 affected the library system and, and your work there? Yeah, thank you. The, um, well, as you probably know that when this county order uh, for stay at home or shelter at home came into effect, the public libraries closed on March 17th. That's a day that's just branded into our minds um, because since that day we've been trying as hard as possible to come up with ways to continue to serve our patrons, um, despite the fact that our physical buildings are closed. Um, so for the library, it's been a it's been a re revisioning of the library. You know, we are, as you know, and you've always been really supportive. The library are already was a center for technology access for our communities. It was already um, a place where people could access things like ebooks and um, download any kind of like language learning and, and like a myriad of online learning tools, as well as all the physical materials in our buildings. And um, the, the closure of our physical buildings really made it clear a couple of things. One is that, that this was an opportunity to make sure that everyone in San Jose could have access to those electric, electronic materials. And the second thing was it really clarified the the impact of the digital divide in San Jose. And that suddenly households that did not have a computer not only didn't have access to the library and all of our wealth of resources, but also didn't have access to the ability to learn um, in a school setting anymore. So we've been really focused on trying to ensure access as always, but just in, in some different delivery methods and um, really pushing our um, e-library cards as well as of our digital collections. And then a whole new world of digital programming, which has just come alive during this period. That, that's wonderful. And I'm hoping we can get into some of that, um, those, those things that are available, even though our libraries are actually not available for picking up books, right? Um, so, Certainly no. yeah. We're working on that actually. Our plan for the next phase as um, well, two things. One is the, as the shelter at home has lingered on, we've had time to ensure that we understand the safety practices that would be required to be able to do pickup at our locations. Good. And the second thing is that um, as the safety orders ease, as opposed to getting worse, that will allow us to be able to um, initiate that service as soon as possible. That's wonderful. I think that's gonna be one of the questions that was asked uh, by somebody on uh, Facebook. Uh, but um, so what are your concerns regarding keeping the libraries closed? What about the after school summer learning programs? What's happening with those? Well, so many of our programs have gone online. And so that's been exciting that, um, for instance, I think something like almost 7,000 um, e-library -car, e cards were issued during this period. So folks who've never had a library card were able to get a digital library card without having to go into a building. And um, more than 250,000 um, e-books have been circulated during this period wow. of time. So okay. folks really understanding and exploring the access to the library, even from home, which is exciting. But for us, you know, being able to provide access in our buildings is really, you know, I've always said that it all starts with being open. And you, you've heard me say yes. that when we push yeah. for open hours, yeah. everything starts when the library is open. And so we've, we've really pushed the envelope on being open uh, digitally, but we're really eager to get back to being open physically. Um, so some of the concerns really are 
obviously around ensuring that we can make sure that both our patrons and our staff are safe when they return to the library. Um, during this time, we worked with colleagues in the field nationally around understanding the best practices in terms of managing materials so that when materials are returned, they're safe to check out again. And so we don't have to um, you make sure that our, our patrons can use the library without fear, which is always one of our goals. And um, also ensure that folks have access to the, you know, more than 2 million volumes of materials that we have available to them. Um, especially during these times when they're home and like my kids are probably going crazy, <laughs> they need more stuff to do. Um, so we have had a lot of programs available online, but I think during the summer, we're really looking to open up our community rooms uh, so that we can have kids being more active again in the libraries. So we are thinking about opening up some of the community rooms then, huh? Good. Yeah, I, you know, actually, council is going to hear a little bit about it next week. Um, we are partnering with our partner department, uh, Parks, Parks Recreation Neighborhood Services, PRNS, um, who typically runs summer camps during the summer. And recognizing that we have so many families now that are struggling uh, with the schools being closed, uh, school, even my kids would go to the camp that's at the local school, yeah. and it's happening this summer, right? Yeah. So, uh, recognizing that we have a lot of need for our communities and also um, families and parents probably trying to get back to work. Um, so really uh, capitalizing on all the city buildings, including parks, community centers, and libraries to have uh, camp-like programs for youth during the summer. So this will be the first time that we do something that's like an all-day type program. Well, that, that's great because a lot of parents, you know, are stuck. I mean, fortunately, my kids are, you know, a little, you know, grown and don't need to go to camps necessarily. But one, one of them, actually, I hope he was listening. Uh, he, uh, he was wondering how to apply for a library card online. And you can do that online, right? Yes, the e-card. So all you have to do is go to sjpl.org. It's probably on the main page, but it's probably like backsplash e-card. Okay, e-card. That's what uh, he's got yeah, to look for. Yeah, it's called the e-card, and um, yeah, we've issued thousands of them since okay. we had to close our doors. Yes, well, it, it's it, this thing has taken everybody by surprise, and and um, I, I, I it, just to just to just so people know, we're actually also looking at ways to minim, minimize our budget deficit that we're expecting. And unfortunately, one of the things that we have brought up at city council is reducing library hours by four hours um, a week. And uh, can you explain how that's going to affect, uh, you know, the, are there people's local libraries? Well, our goal was, um, you know, we, ha we were asked to prepare a budget reduction scenario, which is never a happy thing. And yeah. our general fund is almost entirely funds our staff that provide our operating hours. So we minimize it to the degree we could. Um, and our goal is to look at the individual branches and understand what are the least busy hours and essentially try to make almost surgical cuts that would um, have the least impact in each neighborhood. We're even looking at during those hours whether, um, you know, it's typically m mornings are often quite slow, but mornings are times when both our seniors use the library because it's quieter. And also, um, our, we have early child programs like story time. So is there a way that we can still provide some access while not having the full um, complement of the library open during those hours? So we have some work to do once we know what the final uh, budget shakes out to be, but our goal is to have as minimal impact as possible. Well, why don't you tell us what, what some of the summer programs that are going to be available are? Well, the biggest program, you know, we always do is our summer learning program, which is like summer reading, but it's more than reading because you can take coding classes and you can do all sorts of other types of programs. So our summer learning program starts June 1st to July 31st. It's at sjpl.org backslash summer. Where's that slash? And, and, we'll, slash. and we'll put this up so that nobody yeah. has to remember. You'll, so, one of your staff members can text it to us and we'll put yeah. it up. So, you know, similar to always, you can track your reading, you win prizes. It's in Spanish, English, Vietnamese, and Chinese. And um, everything's available on our website. 
Um, so all of that can happen. We did, we actually did a spring version, uh, spring into reading, which was really ex um, exciting and got people engaged when we first closed, which was kind of nice, I think, to have a distraction. Um, you know, obviously we always have summer lunches, so that'll be part of the program free summer lunch in several of our branches. Um, we have the annual graphic novel making contest, which is actually huge and so many of our um, young people, but actually folks all over the city submit their original stories and artwork. And we have a huge award um, ceremony later in the summer. Um, and so really great prizes and stuff like that. Um, we also have virtual programs such as um, English language learning, game design using Java, which I know your kids will probably want to do. Yeah, um, absolutely. We have a math Olympiad club. <laughs> And uh, also an introduction to Python coding this year. Mm, excellent. Yeah, so the, you know, the full, we also have Coding 5K Summer is happening, which are the full day, full week virtual classes are gonna happen. Um, and so all this stuff is available on our website. Um, for teen programming, we're gonna have virtual teen coding workshops in, in addition to that, but also virtual SAT prep, which SAT prep is such a valuable tool and always really um, important for our teens. So we're gonna make sure they have that online. And um, we have a program called SJ Engage that uh, I know you've been involved with, council member, which is a youth civic engagement program. And um, teens who go through this program unlock experiences such as like interning for a council member or um, you know, for some, some other elected official or some other civic leader um, in order to get them used to and engaged in the decision-making process in the community that they live in. And so um, we're still gonna be having uh, youth civic engagement through the Almaden's Teen Reach program. And um, they're gonna be uh, especially dealing with things like this, how this, the end of this year has been really stressful for teens. Yes. I know I have one who graduated <laughs> this year <laughs> and it was very strange, you know? And so I'm continuing that, that cohort, um, but in a virtual environment. Um, we also have online class visits we've had um, for the past several weeks. And there's just like a whole list of other programs that are all available on our website. That's awesome. You know, and, and you know, when you first came to us, we didn't have any of these things available. I just want to be clear. You've, you have revamped the, our library system in San Jose and you made it, you took it from people checking out books and CDs to a really high tech resource for all. And, and um, I really thank you for that. Not only that, but I think you did get a lot of outside help and can you let us know what kind of support you're getting from uh, our in other industries? You know, I, I, I know that you have this 5K coding challenge and it's being sponsored by, I forget what the, 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 the company that's paying for it or paying for the classes or helping. Let us know how you're working with industry because that's novel to the city too. Yeah, there have been a number of those partnerships that you mentioned it. Um, first of all, thank you for your comments. Also, um, you know, we're really lucky to have support from our city leadership to to explore an innovative new model for libraries. And we also have the most innovative and fun and interesting staff in the world who always come up with new ideas. So I just get to kind of say yes and like try to open doors for them to, to implement these programs. Um, we also have an amazing foundation and our foundation has partnered with uh, organizations like or industry like uh, Alaska Airlines has actually contributed to Coding 5K. They may have been one of the first that really um, sort of recognized this as um, an opportunity to ensure that our local youth are starting really early to learn the skills that they will need to stay in any line of industry. You know, it doesn't just have to be, you know, working at Google. Yeah. You know, learning how to code, learning the, um, the logic and the sequencing of some of these languages really helps in terms of getting any type of job in industry. So Alaska Airlines was a great supporter. Um, KLA 10 Core has been an amazing supporter of the program. Um, and I'm going to forget someone, Johnny. <laughs> no, no problem. I just, I know that, so, so yeah, we weren't even looking at outside companies before you got 
to City Hall. And, and that's what I want, want to highlight. A lot of companies are now stepping up to the plate and uh, give us, giving us resources. Uh, some of them are even volunteering to teach. Uh, am I, am I uh, correct in, in knowing that or, or am I? Oh yeah, no, totally. And so part, some of the partnerships have included funding, but certainly also um, technology. I mean, we have a partnership with Apple. We have grants that we've gotten from uh, partners such as Google and others that have either paid for technology, they can donate technology, but a lot of it is really about um, the spirit of giving back to this community and the fact that they have all these skilled adults who, a lot of them kind of young adults sometimes, but who, um, who can help teach these coding classes. You, as you know, Coding 5K is almost entirely volunteer run Yes. And um, with us, very small program team that we have, they're mighty, but um, the volunteers are so important and having folks who understand how to work in these industries, you know, they can convey the, the curriculum, but part of it is also just like working with the youth and the youth getting to meet somebody in the field that they might be interested in or that they've never heard of. And suddenly they're thinking, oh, there's this kind of cool job where you can, you know, make a good living and live in Silicon Valley and you know so it's a lot of it is really about expanding that community and recognizing the library is a great platform. I always say it's a platform for learning but it's really a platform for sharing resources across all types of organizations. Wonderful and I know and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna embarrass you some more and I know that you're doing even more. Uh, you know a, a lot of times uh, people don't know this but the city of San Jose actually has no control over education. Um, and so we don't control what happens at San Jose Unified School District or ever, you know, or Evergreen School District or any of the other 19 school districts that there are. But a lot of council members, a lot of people are always concerned about how, um, you know, how to close some of the digital literacy gaps and, uh, and, and how to improve education. And they're always coming to the city, even though we don't actually have oversight over this. But our library, especially you, have been very um, uh, working with our school districts. Um, I know that we're trying to, 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 um, to uh, close the digital uh, you know, divide and the literacy, you know, um, uh, the learning gaps. Uh, tell us some of the programs, and I've participated in a couple of them. Tell us what you're doing to close the gap. Yeah, so in San Jose, as you know, we have um, 19 school districts and our staff always, library staff always works closely with the schools to try to ensure that there are resources and that our students have what they need, as you said, to close the, close the divide and learning divide. Um, but what we found here was that there's just, there's so much, so many different organizations that, you know, we kind of stepped into leading the city's education and digital literacy initiative with council's full support and um, really wanting to show that what it would be about is ensuring that any program we provide as a city is provided at a quality level that is, that it is enhancing our youth um, educational attainment. It's not just good and fun and all those great things, but it's actually helping them achieve. And that to show that we have to measure the success and be willing to come back and um, talk about the outcomes. And so, it was kind of a big shift for the city. Now that we're there, it feels like it's in the rear view, but it was huge. Um, so, uh, you know, some of the programs that we're working on, it's funny because it feels like everything got stopped and then restarted. So certainly digital literacy is a major component. And then last, uh, last week at council, you all approved the digital literacy quality standards. Um, so those will be implemented for all programs. But we're also um, working on early education quality standards, which is a whole host of um, pre-literacy and school readiness programming. So everything that we work on um, with the schools uh, is all, and with our preschool providers, with our partners, is all geared towards helping kids be ready to learn by the time they enter kindergarten. And then in the school age area, we have programs like SJ Learns, which is a, an amazing program that's been supported by council for several years that actually funds and sponsors uh, programs that extend the learning day on the school campus. 
with a partner provider, usually like a YMCA or, you know, one of those partners with the school district. And then the city through the library working together to ensure that these programs are really meaningful, that we have the data to show who's learning, how much they're learning, are they getting to grade level, and then we can go back and change what we're doing to make sure that it's more impactful. So that's one, and you know, as you know, the coding programs, um, gosh, we have so many. <laughs> and in the, in the high school area, in addition to SJ Engage, we have a program called SJ Aspires, which is, has did a, did a pilot with Overfelt High School. And it is a, it's basically an online um, college readiness curriculum that um, students would complete. And at the end of, if you completed a, a track, you could win basically, um, or a, be awarded a, um, a small micro scholarship. And it was allow students who might never have identified themselves as college going to start to bank scholarship money through this work. And um, it was very successful. So we're, we're very pleased that we had um, a $2 million um, con contribution to expand the program. So now um, we're gonna capture every student from freshman year on, and the maximum award they can achieve is $5,000 each. So we're really trying about, you know, our, our spirit is to pilot things and then yeah. see what works yeah. and, and go, go into it and really try to invest in it and try to make an impact. Well, you're the, uh, the, the, the entrepreneurial, um, you have the entrepreneurial spirit that, that right. uh, Silicon Valley deserves. Uh, so, you know what, I, I'm going to, we, we've, I've done a lot of talking and I wanted to start uh Ask, getting questions and I have a few questions here that that have been already presented via zoom and I'm going to ask a few of them and then we're going to go live to see if people have questions I think um, the first one was from uh, Moses and will there be an online children's story time if yes what time and day will it be on oh my gosh we have them every day and have you done one yet council member I have not I don't think so one so um, we have um, story times, and it's um, they are um, they are broadcast on Facebook actually at facebook.com obviously slash sjpl early ed. So it's our early education unit. Um, we also have amazing program uh, that's a weekly scavenger hunt for preschool kids online, which is so so fun, and they've done um, so they do a series called Our City Story Time. So you need to do one. I'd be happy to, you know, I'm always good. You know, I'm also, you know, you, <laughs> I'm a, a children's book author myself. So I, I'd be happy to, we, I think we did, we did one of these on community connections one time uh, with my book, but I'd be happy to uh, read for the kids. We also, I, um, we, on our YouTube channel, we have over 80 story times in multiple languages. So there's a, there's a whole sort of um, collection of story times already there. Plus we do, the times on the early ed page every day. All right. I hope you heard that, Moses. And here's another one from him. And he's uh, he says, which phase is the library part of in regards to reopening? So I I, I, um, I don't know if you know the answer to that, but uh, what, well, basically, when are you going to reopen? What phase are you? So we are looking at um, reopening the curbside service as soon as possible, which, but at the least it would be part of what, a, what is called a phase six, which is like six. the next phase, right? Okay. We're All in right. phase five now. So Are we? Okay. next phase is phase six. Yeah. Oh, I just got a notification from my, my, my home audience <laughs> that the state phases are different. Than yes, that's what I thought. No. Right. Yeah. So whatever phase we're in now, the next phase, we would be able <laughs> we're to- We're phase open. two right now, too, I think. We're really looking at everything that we can do outside the buildings as soon as okay. possible. So, you know, this alfresco conversation, uh -huh. we're like, oh, we can put tables outside and computers outside and have the distancing. And so we're really going to experience or experiment with all of that in the next phase. Um, and then we're also- um, going to start opening up parts of the library. So we're, um, if you know our libraries, you know that each one has a beautiful entryway where there is what's called a marketplace and the self-check machines. And there's usually a lovely staff person there to help you. And so we're looking at being able to open that marketplace area first 
Um, it will allow people to pick up reserves, to do some browsing, to ask staff to retrieve materials for them and get that open as quickly as possible. And then also our community rooms, both for youth programming, but other types of programming, as long as we can keep them safe and um, social distancing is, is um, followed. Yeah, you know what? And then I, the I, next phase would- Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. No, no, I just say then we would keep expanding with each phase. Right, you know, and I could tell you this, that uh, the Almaden Library, I've, I've, um, we got last year, we put, um, uh, in the request to put sails on the outdoors area. So it'll be shading and boy, do we need shading on days like today, yeah. but hopefully we'll be able to use that as an outdoor area soon as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, we have a lot of great plazas. Um, you know, the, there's like Wi-Fi. there's, you know, there's just a lot of great uh, opportunity to utilize the outdoor space. Good. And I have our next question is from Bob from Facebook. Uh, why are we unable to reserve books and pick them up at the t at the library? If the library staff are working, they should be able to pass books to us even when libraries are closed. Well, I mean, as we were talking about, when we originally closed, there were no staff in the building and we weren't really understanding. Uh, uh, there wasn't a clear sense of what was safe. Um, so there was no um, distribution of new materials. And the only staff that were in buildings were clearing the book drops. So to ensure that our book drops don't get all um, sort of messed up, a lot of time, a lot of them are automated materials handling, so the machines can get stuck. Hmm. So there would be one or two, a small group of folks going in just to clear the book drop. Um, as we've worked, uh, so a lot of folks are doing all the virtual programming are not actually doing it in the buildings. And um, so more recently, we've been preparing our buildings to be able to do more of these services. So like I said, you know, we originally, our goal was to try to do it on June 1st. Um, and so we're pushing that. I don't know if that's gonna um, be the date, but we will announce it as soon as possible. Okay, I got some more interesting ones. Um, are there any online classes that provide college credit? College credit? Credit. Ooh, well, um, we have a tremendous amount of databases in our, um, if you go to sgpl.org, there's a learning section. And um, we do have a couple of programs. They are, um, to get the actual college credit, the, you have to be a registered uh, participant. Mm -hmm. And so you've been a big supporter of our uh, Partners in Reading Adult Literacy Program. Yes. We added on the Career Online High School where several of our participants have been able to achieve their high school diploma. Well, we've recently piloted an online college program for graduates of our online high school. And so we do, we are, we do have a few folks that are in the, the college degree program. Oh. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, I don't think we have any that we can provide the college credits for. We certainly can provide the access to um, any kind of online program, but um, that program is called Working Scholars, which is an Working online college program. And what, yeah. what, what is the online college that, that, um, that this has piqued my curiosity, what is the yeah. college that gives it, you the credit? Um, it's through, okay, oh, I had to remember. It's through a partner called study.com and they're, um, their nonprofit arm is, is this Working Scholars Program. They work um, specifically with online college programs that apparently it's, it's um, structured in such a way that's really digestible for working adults, mm -hmm. like five minute courses. And then you, you know, then you like take an exam to try to test your knowledge and things like mm -hmm. that. So they, I know that they worked with, um, I'm trying to remember the different, they work with about four different colleges that provide real, um, associate and bachelor's degrees for your degree. Really? Yeah. Well, that, we'd love to, to advertise that a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, well, we'll put it out in the newsletter if you give it to me. Okay, I got another one from Jose via email. Tell us more about the Libby app. I don't know what the Libby uh, app is. And does it work on Android and Apple? Yeah, Libby is the ebook reading app from a company that is called Overdrive, which is just like a vendor of eBooks for libraries. Um, and I think they got bought recently, but, but anyway, Libby is the app and I use it all the time. I could show it to you. 
And um, you you put in your library card and you get access to all the books that the ebooks that the library has purchased for your um, reading pleasure. And um, here, let me see. I'll show you what it looks like. This is Libby. If you can see it. And so there's my library. There's my linked card. Oh, there's a book that I had on hold called Queen of Nothing. Okay. So and borrow it. And that looks like an Apple device, Jill. And uh, is, is it Apple. also available on Android? It is. Okay, good. So it good. should be available on all the all the major like phone platforms, even Google Play, I think. Good. Yeah, well, Google, yeah. Uh, does does the library That's provide yeah. yes, it is. <laughs> does the library provide virtual ESL classes? Yes. Okay. So we're doing the, they are the um, ESL conversation clubs and um, a virtual English language learner grammar club. We have one of those. And we also have our um, virtual citizenship workshop as well. Okay. All right. I don't know if All any more have. Available online. Um, I know that my staff are like writing things in the chat with the, um, the addresses. So I, I've seen a that. couple of things. I'm, I'm trying to not to concentrate on the chat box yeah. and hoping my staff is following up. But yeah. yes, thank you. Yeah, I want to chime in and say yes, we are posting it in Zoom in the chat. We're also trying to post it on the Facebook Live comments. We'll also post this afterwards. We'll go back through. There's a just a, an enormous amount of information that's coming in. And so I'm sure a lot of people are gonna wanna visit these sites. And so we're gonna go back and uh, compile it all and put it all back on. And we'll also put in our newsletter as well. Thank you, Amel. And at, well, speaking of, I, I think um, I've exhausted some of the, 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 the questions that I got on my, uh, before, we got on live. Is there any live questions that were asked? Yeah, yeah. So we had some questions that came on email and Facebook and next door. And those are the questions we just went through. Uh, we also have um, Moses is on Zoom right now. I'm going to unmute him so that he can ask one of his questions. I think um, we've already answered one, but he had another one. And so let me uh, bring in Moses. Moses, are you there? I am here, and uh, actually, my wife Annie will ask the question. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was the one who submitted the question online. Oh, okay. So, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think Joe may have already partially answered these. It was regarding the ebook because we 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 have never used it in the past before this period of time, and we were wondering what what kind of devices. Uh, I think you mentioned iPhone and, yeah. and any computer would work as well. Um, for the most part, there are several apps that work with um, a web-based downloads. So you can actually do it into a browser. Mm -hmm. um, you can do both ebooks and e audiobooks which are really, that's what I usually like, because then I can listen to it while I'm like driving and on the bike and other stuff. Um, but most of the apps, there will be different ones. The, the major ones are uh, Libby, which is the, the app for OverDrive. And mm -hmm. then we have another one called Access 360. I think it's still called that, uh, which is for one of our major uh, book vendors called Baker and Taylor. And so between the two of those, that's a, the largest um, parts of the ebook collection that you'll be able to access. I and see. yeah, and then you can, they're, they've become more and more usable in terms of searchability. And we've been investing a lot more into the e-collections, obviously, since we've been closed physically to the public. Mm -hmm. So if you ever can't find something, you know, there's a suggest a book on our website and you can also, um, you can suggest any type of ebook, and we'll, we'll look at purchasing it if we can. I see. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we also have a lot of um, magazines too. There's one called RVD Digital or something like that that has um, uh, virtual magazines that you can access, which is nice. Another one that I want to plug, which is not an ebook, but it's um, it's a program called Mango Languages, which if you've never tried it, it has like over 80 languages and it's super easy to use on a tablet or um, on your phone, on your website, um, on any website, but um, my, I have a story about once my, my son had taken my iPad when he was like seven or eight. And I thought that he was 
like screwing around playing a game and I I snuck around the corner and I could hear him playing with mango languages and he was learning Vietnamese wow <laughs> yeah because you can it talks to you and you can repeat back and it records you and it's it's swipeable and it's just super easy to use and you can learn like almost any language on there mango languages mango I know my son yeah my son is bored now and that he's um he's a pioneer high school and he was an A student. Now it's pass or fail. So he's cruising the rest of the year. So, yeah. <laughs> so now he's well, interested in languages. I think Being it even it. has like some sci-fi languages. Like it has, really? um, it has Klingon. Pirate. You can learn pirate. It has Klingon. I think it has Klingon or like Elvish, you know, it has like those kind of things. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Wonderful. Yes. Now that, that won't come in handy, but I'm sure, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. going on all right okay any other questions yes, from our live audience yes, yes go ahead we have a ton of questions i'm hoping we can kind of go rapid fire in the next few minutes just to get through all right and um so while you were speaking earlier uh about some of the virtual programs and some of the programs that you're going to try and um launch in the phase two part uh, maybe Alfresco. Someone asked uh, on Facebook, Rebecca on Facebook asked, are you looking for staff to work the programs? So if you can kind of think back at some of the programs that you mentioned and are we looking for staff for those programs? Yeah, well, we have an amazing staff. Um, it's, it's always possible, you know, we have a lot of part-time positions that uh, positions become vacant and then we hire new positions. Um, we also have an amazing volunteer core and we do, we have a thing called engaged volunteers, which you get to actually shape programs and perform programs. You're not just, you know, like wiping down books and other kind of maybe more mundane tasks. So, um, it's always like, if you have time and you want to get engaged with the library, I think, uh, looking at being an engaged volunteer and then you'll learn a lot about if there are any positions available. Okay. And then you were talking about um, again opening up the libraries a bit um, and so Donna on Facebook asked are masks required inside the library will mask wearing be enforced? Will masks be required where would you say? Inside the library. So um, a lot of it will depend on what the county orders are saying. And so currently, as you know, the county order is um, that anywhere that where people are gathering, like a, a place of business, that masks are required. And so we would be similar to that sort of a setting where, um, you know, like a restaurant or a store or whatever, um, and we want to keep everyone safe. So certainly we are stocking up on what's called personal protective equipment for our staff and assuming that it will be needed for the public as well. Okay. Um, in just the interest of time, I'm going to kind of group some of these together and just ask you to tell us a little bit about um, the SJPL Works program, the Career Assistance Online uh, let's start with those two, so I don't give you too much. We have a couple of questions on those, but if you can just kind of give us a brief overview on those two programs. Yeah, so um, SJPL Works is a center at our main library, the, the King Library, and um, it's also a program that we've taken out into the branches. So it is um, employment assistance, it is everything from resume building to getting your head shot to um, speed interviews and hiring programs we've done over time. So um, this is a program that's gonna be super important as we reopen and we're gonna be um, hoping to expand the offerings that are available as soon as day one when we're able to open. So um, if you, again, our website, sjpl.org slash sjplworks, um, you can find out everything that's planned and um, get involved. You can even get on an emailing list for that um, service so that you'll find out everything that comes out. Sorry, I just realized I was still muted. Um, and so um, I think we all have uh, people running around behind us and doing things and <laughs> it's just a new way. Um, and so one question, um is could you expand a little bit on the virtual class visit program and has it been successful
and I think you are muted. I am muted. Um, what I know about that is that it has been really popular um, that we've had more than 134 um, classrooms get involved and we've had, um, and then we have about 15 more visits already scheduled. So I think that they, um, what it, what it does is they have a, a staff person sort of depending on what the class is, has been learning or is interested in is able to offer access to the resources that we have around whatever the topics are. Like say you were in a class and you were studying, you know, like a native American unit or, you know, local history in San Jose, we're able to give kids that access they would have gotten if they were able to do a class visit at the library and then oftentimes with younger kids they'll end with a story time or some other activity that we would have done that's age appropriate so again we've had um gosh it's almost like 150 classes either participate since we launched it just a couple of weeks ago um and uh, we have more scheduled and that one is at sjpl.org visit Okay, we'll, we'll put that online too. <laughs> Our um, web team is strong. They're really good with the friendly URLs. A lot of resources on that site. Um, I think just in the interest of time, um, we have some more questions, but we will respond to those uh, individually. We will also post a lot of these links um, on our website, in the newsletter, um, on the Facebook comments itself. Um, I think I just want to ask you if there's any other, um, you know, closing remarks or anything that you want to share, anything exciting coming out of the library with all the transition uh, that's been happening, kind of what's, what's next? Um, well, you know, it's, I always feel like the library's most exciting place to be. Um, we're, super, we're just really excited to be able to reopen and start serving our communities again. Um, and looking for ways for our communities to take their library into their home, like we've been able to pilot uh, during this period. So even when we're open, just looking for other ways to make sure that all of our residents have access, um, that they can they can use all the amazing websites that you heard about today, but also um, be able to engage with our staff in ways that are safe and, um, you know, uh, support them in whatever they want to achieve in their lives, which is what we're here for. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time, Jill. I really appreciate everything you're doing for our community. And it was so wonderful that you made time to be here on Community Connections with us today. Thank you, Jill. This was fun. Thank you so much. All right. And I want to thank everybody who tuned in today. Um, stay tuned. Next Wednesday, we're having our monthly office hour, our virtual office hours. And so that'll be at 8.30 a.m. on June 3rd. And to, if you want to submit questions ahead of time, please do so at District 10 at San Jose CA. Dot gov. Then on June 4th, we have a District 10 is offering a free disaster preparedness training. And uh, so th this, this training is going to be virtual as well. Uh, and uh, please do tune in for that. We'll have some more information live there. Check out our newsletter on and uh, events page on my website, upcoming uh, co community connections like this uh, pre pre emergency preparedness. And uh, we have a lineup of special guests coming in from the Parks and Recreation Department, um, Office of Emergency Training. So we have a lot of great guests coming up for our community connections. Thank you for being here today and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>